Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, I'll take you through the reaction and mechanism for alkoxymercuration demercuration. This is an alkene addition reaction. This reaction is very similar to oxymercuration demercuration, which I discussed in my last video. If you missed that video, find it with my entire alkene reaction video series on my website at LeiaForSci.com slash alkene reactions. The best way to understand this reaction is to recognize how very similar it is to oxymercuration and then we'll focus on the difference. Notice both reactions have oxy and mercuration and that is because we add an oxygen atom through a mercury reaction intermediate. The only difference is the alk oxy has an alkyl group which is an R group. For oxymercuration, if I react the starting alkene with HgOAC2 in water as step 1, followed by the reducing agent sodium borohydride in step 2, the product is going to be the same starting skeleton but with an alcohol on the more substituted carbon in following with Markovnikov's rule. If I copy over the exact reaction for alkoxymercuration, all I have to do is swap out the H2O for an alcohol, for example methanol or CH3OH. The product, instead of having an OH, will have an OCH3. And the way you want to recognize this difference is water is simply an oxygen atom bound to two hydrogen atoms with two lone electron pairs on the oxygen. If I take one of those hydrogen atoms and replace it with an R group, for example CH3 as you see in methanol, everything about this molecule is still the same. We still have an oxygen with two lone pairs and two bonds. We still have that highly electronegative atom pulling electron density towards itself, but the only difference is that now we have just one partially positive hydrogen atom, whereas water has two partially positive and oxygen is still partially negative. So whether you have a water molecule or an alcohol, the oxygen still has those lone electron pairs, still has that partial negative charge, and is still a nucleophile in the reaction. So let's take a look at the mechanism and see how they're the same and how they differ. We start out with the same alkene as we used in the last video, showing the pi electrons in a different color because these are the nucleophilic and therefore reactive electrons on the molecule. We have mercury bound to two acetates or ethanoates and the pi bond as the nucleophile reaches out to attack mercury. Mercury can only have two bonds so we show one of the acetate groups breaking away and dissolving into solution. We show the OAC minus which you can also show as acetate minus in solution. Then we'll show the product of this step where the pi bond is broken and the mercury with just one OAC is bound to the less substituted carbon giving us that fleeting carbocation intermediate on the more substituted carbon in accordance with Markovnikov's rule. Remember in the last video we called mercury the carbocation babysitter because it immediately attacks that carbon and doesn't allow for a carbocation rearrangement. We show what this looks like in the next step where HgOAC is bound to that primary carbon, but now we have a second bond from mercury to the secondary carbon with a positive charge on our mercurinium ion. Up until this step, everything is the same as the oxymercuration reaction, including the fact that the primary carbon is slightly partially positive and the secondary carbon is even more partially positive. In oxymercuration, you would show the next step as a water molecule using a lone pair of electrons to attack the more substituted or secondary carbon. For this reaction, we'll swap out hydrogen with a CH3 group giving us methanol and we have that exact same attack. Oxygen still reaches with a lone pair of electrons to attack the more substituted carbon atom. Carbon cannot have five bonds, and so we'll show the bond between the secondary carbon and mercury collapsing to break onto mercury as a lone pair of electrons. To show the next intermediate, we have Hg now bound only to the primary carbon and still holding the acetate, and on the secondary carbon, we have an oxygen bound to hydrogen and bound to CH3. Oxygen had two lone pairs of electrons, 
One was used to create a bond, the second one is still sitting on the oxygen atom, and that gives oxygen a formal charge of plus one. To neutralize oxygen, we'll use a nucleophile from solution. Your professor may accept another alcohol or the acetate. I'm going to show the acetate using one of its lone electron pairs to attack and grab the hydrogen, which causes the bond between oxygen and hydrogen to break onto the oxygen atom. As a result, we have the carbon skeleton still bound to HgOAc on its primary carbon, but it now has an oxygen with a CH3 group on its secondary carbon. Oxygen had a purple lone pair of electrons. Now it has an additional red pair from where the hydrogen atom broke off, and it's neutral. In solution, we also have the acetate now bound to the purple hydrogen atom, giving me acetic acid in solution. Let's move that out of the way. Now this is where you notice the key difference between oxy and alkoxymercuration. Oxymercuration gave us an alcohol as the final product, but here we have an oxygen bound to an alkyl group, so in this case it's not a hydroxy but a methoxy, which means our product is an ether. But we still have to get rid of that HgOAc, so we'll just show the arrow for the next step using the reducing agent sodium borohydride. Without showing the mechanism, we simply remove the HgOAc and substitute a hydride in its place. This gives me a final product with a methoxy group on the secondary carbon and the hydride or hydrogen atom on the primary carbon. Since this molecule has an R, O, R, this molecule is an ether which is different from the product of oxymercuration which is simply an alcohol. Be sure to join me in the next video where I take you through the hydroboration oxidation reaction and mechanism. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.